today we're going to look at a couple of methods for removing black backgrounds in Affinity Photo. Here is my example image with a black background. If you have an overlay image like this one right now and want to blend it in with your composition, the quickest and easiest way is by using the screen blend mode. So here is my background. If I enable the fire image and set the blend mode to screen, we got a nice blend where the black basically becomes invisible and the brighter parts of the fire are shown. Depending on the situation, this might not always work. For example, if I change the background color to cyan, notice how the screen blend mode is not really working. Using the screen blend mode usually works well when you are overlaying a dark background. So how can we actually remove the blanks from the fire layer? Let's first duplicate the layer before moving on. One way of removing blanks is by using the built-in luminosity mask, which was introduced in version 2 of Affinity Photo. From the layers panel, I can right click on the mask button to open up the masking options. We can now select the luminosity range mask. The luminosity mask lets you create a mask based on the brightness of a layer. In simple terms, it uses the lightness or darkness in the image to make the mask. We can use the luminosity map in the dialog to decide what parts of the image to mask. The left side of the map represents the dark areas and the right side the light areas. By adjusting the curve to block the dark parts, we essentially mask out the black areas. You can really fine tune the curve to decide how much of the blacks you want to keep. Pretty cool. We can also achieve the same effect by using blend ranges. I'll make another duplicate and this time I'll open up the blend options by pressing the cog button in the layers panel. We can now adjust the source layer range curve similar to the luminosity mask map. And as you can see, the result of this is exactly the same as the luminosity mask. Even though these two methods work quite well, here are a couple of additional methods for removing black from an image. These take a bit more effort, but they do offer more flexibility and might also work better for some images. Let's take a look at them. I'll make two copies of the image layer and use a black and white adjustment to create a mask to remove the blacks. In the adjustment dialog, I will increase the sliders to max value, which basically makes all the colors white. Depending on your image, you can also adjust specific colors to get a better mask. For example, lowering the blues gets a better mask for this image. We need to clip the adjustment to the top image layer, which we can do by dragging and dropping it on the top image layer. As we are going to use this as a mask, I'm going to drag and drop this to the image layer below so that it becomes a child clip layer for the first copy. When we expand this first copy, we can see our black and white mask. Actually, it is not acting like a mask yet. An easy way of making sure this acts like a mask is by using the Erase Blend mode and then changing the blend range so that the whites are not being erased. Pretty awesome. As this whole process is non-destructive, we can easily go back to the black and white adjustment and fine tune it to our needs to get the best looking blend. Here is a quick tip for you. To make the mask image fit better with the background, we can add a fill layer with the same color as the background and set its blend mode to luminosity and then change the blend range of the fill to only apply to the darker areas. This will lighten up the dark transition areas to better fit with the background. If you're willing to work destructively, we could also use the select color function. Let me make a copy of the original image and then rasterize it to a pixel layer by right clicking on the layers panel and selecting rasterize and trim. Now that we have a pixel layer, we can use the select sample color menu item from the select menu. Select the black area with your mouse and adjust the tolerance so that the blacks are all selected and press apply. With the selection active, we can now press the mask button in the channels panel to create a mask from the selection. As we had the black selected, the created mask will actually keep the blacks. We can select the mask and invert the mask by pressing Command or Ctrl I to invert the mask. Now the blacks are removed. 
as we have a mask to remove the blacks, we also now have the possibility to fine-tune the mask. For example, we can add a levels adjustment to the mask and make changes in the alpha channel to control the intensity of it. And here is the final technique using a procedural texture filter. After I made a copy of the original again, I will add the procedural texture filter to this copy. With a little bit of smart math on the alpha channel, we are able to remove the blacks. I already have a preset for this and will apply this preset. The use formula will be in the description. By default, this removes most of the blacks, but it does have some additional options to fine tune it. I will not go into the details of this, but as you can see, by playing with the custom input values, we can get different options on how to remove the blacks from the layer. To wrap up, if you want to use an image with a black background as an overlay, the screen blend mode will usually do the job. However, sometimes this is not enough or it just might not work. In those cases, you can then use the other methods I shared. For example, in this case, I want the fire to be stronger. If I add the fire again in screen blend mode, it will become brighter and lose its intensity. Instead of using the screen blend mode on the second overlay, I can remove the blacks from it with one of the methods I showed earlier, resulting in a much stronger overlay. By also adjusting the opacity of this layer, we get a very nice strong fire effect. And that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you found these techniques helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Affinity tips and tricks. If you have questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.